Sometimes educational information can be boring, so we decided to do a video and try to make it a little less boring. Our intent with this video is not to tell you what to do, we're just trying to show you the big picture. This video is directed at the potential outcome of the large sporting goods companies and their distribution entering into skateboarding. Skateboarding has, also, has always been more than just a business for us and for many others in skateboarding. But the bottom line, the business aspect of it is what pays the bills. And we know that if we can't beat them, we can join them. But then it would become just business. So let's try to beat them first. Let's start out with a little history. When skateboard companies started, it was just a bunch of skateboarders that wanted to make better products than just a pair of roller skates nailed on a 2x4. Once they started making these products, they needed a way to distribute them, the most obvious way being through the sporting goods stores. But these stores wanted nothing to do with these high quality skateboards. Even when skateboarding became a so-called fad many years ago, the same sporting goods and toy stores wanted nothing than the cheaply made plastic versions and not the high quality skateboard products that were made by the skateboarders. There were skateboarders who wanted high quality skateboard products but couldn't get them. And so this is how skateboard shops came about. It was the dedication of the skate shops around the, <coughs> around the country that enabled skateboarding and skateboard companies to survive. They helped put on contests, sponsor riders and events, and they pushed for public parks and were overall there to help skateboarders and encourage skateboarding. The large sporting goods companies and their distribution had no hand and played no role throughout the struggle. Now that skateboarding has become more widespread and mainstream, and sports like baseball, basketball, and football continue to decline, the large sporting goods companies want in. It's understandable that they would want in, and in many circumstances it wouldn't matter because it's a free world. But the major threat is if these large sporting goods companies are legitimized by the skateboard population. We feel the existing channel of skateboard distribution that helped to make skateboarding a reality would be lost. The reason we believe that this would happen is because the large sporting goods companies have a distribution that does not include the skateboard shops, yet it's ironic because they need these shops to be legitimized. 
Once legitimized, these sporting goods companies can take their products to their own chain of stores. Let me give you a couple of examples of what I'm talking about. In May of 1998, Big Brother did an article regarding corporate involvement in the skateboard industry. In it, Big Brother asked Nike's team manager a couple of questions regarding the Don't Do It campaign. One question, are you aware of the Don't Do It campaign, said Big Brother? Nike's response, yes, it's amusing to me. Big Brother then explains, the fear that generated this campaign is that Nike will take their products to the malls and chain stores and put the small skate shops out of business, Nike replies. Nike's always been about authenticity. We will attempt to drive our business through the core skate shops, but we have strategic partners that will have the option to carry our product also. I also just recently received this following email. It says, I've been to your website and I think your skateboard products are perfect for the stores we work with. We work hand in hand with the largest stores in the country, plus thousands of small to medium sized specialty businesses stretched across the US. If you want the opportunity to sell your products through major retailers like Walmart, Target, Big Five, Sports Mart, Sports Chalet, QVC, HSN, etc., plus the other 51,005 gift stores, 15,643 sporting goods stores, and over 24,000 mail order catalogs, check us out. I know that every skateboard company got this email, but not one skate shop got it. So what can you do? First of all, as companies, we can do our best to keep our products out of the large sporting goods chains. Though these quick large sales may be appealing, we're not creating more skateboarders. We're just diluting the sales of the skate shops. We know that it can be hard to monitor, but it can be done. Shops, you play a major role in legitimizing these sporting goods brands. By not carrying their product, you are denying them a bridge into the industry because once legitimized, they'll take it from there. Now you, the skateboarder, you have the ultimate control because you determine from where and from who you buy your skateboard stuff. Again, we're not trying to tell you what to do. If you don't care, that's fine. But if you do, you can start off by duplicating this video, giving it to skateboarders who may not know what's actually going on behind the scenes. Because we know not all the people we are trying to reach are watching this video, that's why we need your help. We can almost guarantee this video will not be playing in the skateboard section of the sporting goods stores, so we're asking for your help to get the word out, because you can reach the people that we can't. The text of this video and other resources will be available at don'tdoitarmy.com to help in the fight. Write letters to people, companies, shops who you think can be of help as well. Like we said, we think we can beat them, but we can't do it without your help. Well, there's black.